Genesis. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so uh, I have a request to the panel and the audience. I'm a bit jet lagged. I'm also hypoglycemic. I didn't get time to have lunch. So if I start speaking gibberish, please correct me. So uh, let's begin. So it's, it's an extension of uh, Dr. Uh, Thomas George's talk on how much of my income do I spend? How much of it should I? The, the actual topic should be how much of it should I save? Now, there is a problem right now. Uh, and we have to recognize it because, and, and it is pretty acute right now. Now, Indians in general, when compared to the uh, general population in the world, are considered to be historically really good savers. We liked our savings. But in the recent past, what has happened is the Indians are saving less and borrowing more. And the latest statistics uh, says, say that the uh, savings as a percentage of uh, GDP, net GDP, has come down to 5.1%, which is like lowest since 1970s. So it should be going up, not coming down. Now what the economists say is this is probably because of inflation, but it, it is also because of our spending habits. To feed our spending habits, what we're doing is we're just borrowing more. We are using money that we don't have to buy things that we don't need. So that's what's going on now. And that's good for the economy in the short term, as in there's going to be a, a rise in the GDP figures in the short term. But in the long term, it's the savings that contribute to the GDP. So in the intermediate and the long term, it's actually very bad for the economy. Because today's savings are tomorrow's GDP. Now, this is a Western concept uh, and not completely applicable to India. But this was uh, uh, explained by Elizabeth Warren. She was a former U US senator uh, in her book. It's called the 50-30-20 rule. So it's roughly, it's the basic minimum. As uh, Dr. Thomas George said before, it, the basic minimum is about 20% that you should save. But that may not be realistically enough in our conditions. We should be looking at figures closer to 40%. So the 50, out of the 50-30-20 rule, what is the 50%? 50% is a non-negotiable needs, things which you have to spend on. There's no way out of it, like bills, groceries, your transportation. Transportation, by transportation, I mean the basic necessary transport, uh, means of transport. I don't mean a Mercedes. Rent, insurance premiums, debt repayments. I mean, once you are in debt, it becomes a need. You have to repay it. So those come under the 50%. So if you divide your income into uh, 50, 30, and 20, and 50% should be on the necessities. 30% for the wants, for the luxuries. No, you like to live a lot. Uh, live, we, like, we all like to live uh, our lives. You know, we don't want to be, you know, totally stingy. So 30% are for your trips or your holidays, your luxuries, your eating out at restaurants, you know, the, the swiggy that you order. Uh, for your subscriptions, your Spotify, Netflix, Amazon Prime, etc., your flashy clothes, bags, jewelry, the latest iPhone, the luxury cars, gym memberships, and gifts for things like birthdays and, 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 and uh, festive celebrations. So they come under the 30%. This should not exceed 30% of your income. And this is the most important point. It comes at the last, but it should be actually in, in the beginning. This, as I said, is the bare minimum, and it's extrapolated from, a, uh, from the Western societies. Probably the figure is closer to 30 or 40 percent in our case, but at least 20 percent of your income should be in savings. And out of the savings comes the most important part, emergency fund. You should have a, 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 a certain amount set aside for emergencies, which can vary between three to six months of your income. Because if you are ill or if you have an emergency, you should have backup income to support you during that period. So have an emergency fund. That should be part of the 20% savings. The rest go for investments, as uh, Dr. Thomas George said, mutual funds, stock markets, fixed deposits in inverted commerce, and retirement schemes. You could also consider paying off your debt early and you know, closing your debts early. That, that comes under, that also can come under this bracket. 
But before you apply the 50-30-20 rule, you should know what you earn. So what you earn, uh, what your salary is, the gross salary is not what you earn. What you earn is after taxes. So you should know what your taxes are and what your final income is after deducting taxes. Uh, it needs a bit of effort in the beginning to know what tra tax bracket you fall in, what are the tax uh, you know, savings you can have, what are the uh, uh, ways to reduce your tax burden. But if you overcome that, then it becomes easy. It's just the initial effort that you need. But again, if you don't have the time for it and don't have the inclination for it, you can, of course, outsource it to a good financial advisor. And by good financial advice, I mean good. There are a lot of spurious financial advisors out there who will take you for a ride and you may, who may en, en, you know, enroll you in schemes that you don't want. Then this is another important aspect of uh, uh, you know, savings. It's to track your budget. Uh, we may think that we know in, our, in the back of our mind, we know how much we are spending, but no. We all have this in inherent bias. We tend to minimize us, our expenses and maximize our savings. So in our mind, our savings are magnified and our expenses are minified. The only way to get an objective idea about this is to track it. Simplest way is to form, make an MS Excel sheet if you are into that. Or there are so many apps available online on your Android phone or your iPhone, which you can use to track your budget. There are many banks actually, the way I do it is my bank has an app which allows me to, the, the, I, mean, I spend all my money from one account. So the bank tracks the, my expenses automatically and at the end of the month I get a pie chart where I spent what. So tracking your budget is important. Again, identify your needs. Obviously your needs should be your absolute needs. What are not needs are dining at a flash restaurant ordering Swiggy while walking, watching cricket, that is not a need, those are wants. So don't confuse your wants and needs. And sometimes a want can become a need. Suppose you decide to buy a, some, uh, an expensive, say, uh, uh, a phone or a car, a, new, a flashy new car, and you buy it on EMI. Once you've done that, the EMI becomes your need, which something which was a want comes into your 50% need bracket. So try and avoid doing that. But once it has happened, then it becomes a need. Again, an another area of controversy, do you need your own house or, or is renting better? Now for many Indians, owning a house is an emotional investment. So in that sense, it makes sense. But do you want to own a house as an investment? Uh, that's, a, that's a matter uh, for another day. Savings, uh, that is the most important, as I said, the 20% bracket. How much time do you have to devote to your investments? Are you really financially savvy or are you extremely busy? Do you have enough time to look at where you're going to invest? If not, simplest way is to automate your savings, start an SIP. Mutual funds are generally safer. I'm not saying they are the safest. They are generally safer than directly dabbling in the stock market, but if you are confident, if you know your ways around the stock market, please go ahead. Uh, but it's not possible for all doctors who are you know, really busy with their, their uh, professional lives. If you can't, cannot do it yourself, of course, outsource to a good financial planner. Again, what's important is consistency, setting realistic goals. You need to have certain goals in your mind. For example, retirement you want to buy a home or you want to fund kids education and have realistic plans so you can't be earning 20,000 rupees a month and wanting to buy a mansion so be realistic about it formulate a plan and the important thing is to stick to it now I showed Jack, Jack Alice here anybody knows why because he's considered one of the most consistent cricketers ever very underrated but he is so if the plan is unviable always switch, switch to a plan B or be open to re-evaluation. And this is very, very important. When you have emergencies, you should have the emergency fund and make use of it. But once you made use of it, replenish the fund in your next proper income and change plans if needed. If, if push comes to shove, you will have to change your plans and don't 
you obviously cannot take from your 50% needs. Reduce your wants. That's something that you can do in the short term when you are in a pinch. And again, don't neglect your wants either because life is to be lived. You should not neglect it completely. But beware of the hedonic treadmill. What the hedonic tre treadmill is, you get to a certain stage of happiness and, and you, it satiates you and then you, don't, you, you need to get more to feel more happy. So don't get on that treadmill. Be very conscious of that. Thank you. Thank you, Prashup. That was uh, very clear and succinct.